Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a f***ing ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. I'm Molly Bay. Today is October the 10th, 2020. No game tomorrow. We do not have a game. No Buccaneers game. game. No Buccaneers game. Until October 18th, and the Packers at the Bucks, 425 Eastern Standard Time. It's not fair that we have to endure this loss. For all these days. extra days. days. It's excruciating. Uh, Painful. Yeah, you know, everybody's in a kerfuffle. Uh, It was a rough one. But I think everybody is a little too upset. You think so? Yeah, I sure do. Okay. We were upset. Yeah, we were upset. Well, I thought we were going to win, even to the last last down. Right, yeah. I think everybody did. I mean, when Tom Brady got the ball back with a minute left. Yeah, you're like, like, he does this all the time. Yeah, this is easy, easy wheezy, easy breezy, easy Brady. But it did not work out that way. Tom Brady had a big brain fart. Apparently, who knows what that was all about? I mean, we're not going to get the answer from him. Maybe, maybe later he'll come out and say something. But, you know, Arians was like, I don't know. You have to talk to Brady. And Brady was like, I ain't going to answer that question, basically. I know. <laughs> Why well, did I? it's obvious what happened. He lost yeah. track of the downs. I yes. Mean, and no... the pass he threw was really a boneheaded pass. Of all the receivers out there, I think we put four. No, we put five out. Uh, he had. Ronald Jones open underneath, uh, who probably would – I think we needed six yards. I think he was, you know, two yards away from the first down marker. Uh, he would have gotten it, most likely. Yeah. And the I think he threw it to Brait. Was that the last pass to Brait? I can't remember. But he was covered, completely draped. I have no idea why Brady threw that pass. And then for it to be a fourth down and him thinking it's third down. The other thing that could have happened was uh, Leftwich maybe lost track of the downs and said something. You know, when, yeah, like when they were coordinating, oh, we'll do this one and then this one. And Brady doesn't want to throw him under the bus. That was my other thought. But I mean, either way. The, the the down was lost track of something strange you know Jameis winston had this problem he had many many of the, and he even talked about it he was like i never even pay attention to what down it is you know he couldn't see the the down markers i think he mentioned at one time you know so he just was like i don't i don't even pay attention to it and then we had quite a few instances with Jameis where he got he lost track of the downs but for tom brady to do it that was just uh, so out of character. And again, you know, it makes you wonder if the GOAT's going to do that here in Tampa. And, you know, he's keeping up with Winston's interception rate pretty much. <laughs> Not quite as bad, but uh, he's cut the sack rate in about half, but the interception rate's still staying up there. With Winston, he makes you go, maybe it's Tampa. I mean, if you can get the GOAT to come here and screw up that badly. You know, basically costs us a game, which is what you would expect to happen from a Tampa Bay quarterback. I mean, I think the last time we had a really good comeback was <laughs> with Josh Freeman back with the uh, against the Green Bay Packers. Is the last time I can remember where you went. Wow, that was really that was a fourth quarter, you know, one minute comeback. So, anyhow, are we jumping right into the game? Is that what we're yeah. doing? Okay, no fact checks or follow ups. Nope. Okay. All right, I've got some notes here, not a whole lot. I have the, the all 22 is out, but I haven't had a chance to go completely through it. Now, the everybody got blamed for this. The offensive line got blamed. Arians got blamed. Brady got blamed. The receivers got blamed. Uh, really, the only one that didn't get blamed was Ronald Jones because he had a good game, two mm-hmm. good games in a row. Uh, the defensive line got blamed. The secondary got blamed. The linebackers, everybody was like, where were they at? You know, mm-hmm. a left witch got blamed. Uh, Todd Bowles got blamed for the soft coverage. It, it's 
it's been all over the place. As a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of people turn on Bruce Arians. I've seen a lot, a lot, a lot of negativity on him. And it's just so weird. It's like, what are we, bipolar? Because against the Chargers game, you know, everybody was like, we're awesome. Five touchdowns. <laughs> Tom Brady is the GOAT. You know, everybody's running around. And unfortunately, we didn't get to enjoy that win long enough. It just goes to show what winning does. I mean, no one right. gives a crap about all the mistakes when you win. Right, right. Expectations were through the roofs. And we played on a Thursday night in front of a national broadcast uh, audience. It was the second highest rated game in Fox's history. What? Yes. Uh, It was 14.7 million people watched that. It's the largest television audience Fox has had in prime time since the Super Bowl in February. What? It was the most streamed Thursday night game Fox ever produced uh, between the broadcast, the NFL network broadcast, and fan streaming. Over 15 and a half million people watched the game. So, you know, it was on a bright stage, mm-hmm. and we crapped the bed. Everybody got to see us, and, and that hurt. You know, we we had so many, everybody expected us to win. Everybody. I didn't see anybody that said the Bears were going to win. And even we did. I mean, I think we totally underestimated the Bears. Uh, we should have watched the second half of that game, huh? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, the, the Bears apparently are not as bad as everybody's making them out to be. Well, and I also think that Chuck Pagano had a huge leg let up on... Bruce Arians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you talked about that. Yeah. You know, Chuck Pagano is the defensive I mean, coordinator for the defense Bears. that defense just killed us, especially the defensive line. I mean, they just wrecked our offensive line. Well, I will argue with you on that one. But it does appear. I mean, we, you know, we we're coming from like the ultimate high. You know, we came back in one in uh, – one against the Chargers, a spectacular game. Everybody played great. And then we go on primetime television and basically lay an egg. And we played against a team that we, everybody, everybody felt we should have beat. I think the only people that didn't think we should have beat them was the Chicago Bears themselves, mm-hmm. who got a hands off to them. They played a good game. They played their A game. Yeah. They played the best they've played all season. Uh, Santos? You know, he kicked two field goals. One was a 47-yarder. He doesn't do that a lot. I mean, he's not known for a big kicking. Right, and he didn't make it with the Bucks for that reason. Right, and he got cut by the Tennessee Titans in the mid-season last year for having a 44% kicking rate. He Good missed Lord. four kicks in one game, and they were like, out of there. <laughs> so this is the best game he's had in a long time. You know, I mean, he had two opportunities, a lot of stress on him with that 47-yarder, and he got it. A 47-yarder. He doesn't make them off. And I think he's got like a 76% rate for anything over 40 yards or 40 to 49, something like that. You know, it's just not not spectacular. He should have missed at least one of them, but he didn't. Uh, Foles played good. You know, they just didn't make a lot of mistakes. They played basic football and they, uh, you know, they brought their A game. It's the best they played all year long and it worked, but it didn't work. And here's what I want to emphasize with everybody we didn't get our butts handed to us. Right. It this was, was a 19 one to 20 point game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And apparently the Bears are a little bit better than everybody gives them credit for. And we we did not play our A game, not by any stretch of the imagination. And we were still one point away from them. And we should have won that game there at the end. But, you know, Tom Brady had the, the, the brain fart. The, the old age caught up with him. He got the... Are they caught old timers? You got the old timers. Hey, I'm getting that from Tampa Bay Times. Oh yeah, I, I just read that. You read that article. Yeah, yeah. you know people the are pissed about that article. Yeah, Good. like fans are telling me to fuck off, basically. Good. But yeah, the journalists just... are all pissy that he's not answering questions. Right, that's what they're mad about. Yeah, because you got to remember these guys are not fans. They're not fans. Mm-hmm. You know, they're it's just a job for them. And to them, what's important is other journalists. And what you tell to them. And what you tell to them, mm-hmm. exactly. And when you don't tell them stuff or you don't give access, you don't answer their questions, they get pissy. 
And that's what's happened. Well, and the gripe was that Brady very publicly admonished his offensive line. So who is going to publicly admonish Tom Brady? Right, right. That was John Romano from the Tampa Bay Times. And to me, I'm like, that's not how that works. Yes. Well, here, right, exactly. It's like, the, what? What? That's like, who's going to smack the president if yeah. the president talks bad to people? You know, it's like, yeah, no, that's not how it works. He's a boss for a reason. <laughs> well, and you just, you don't even know. You have no idea what was that behind closed doors. Right, the, right. It does not have to play out in the public sphere. In fact, it's probably better for the team if it doesn't. Right. But the media doesn't want that to happen. The media wants to they be want all drama. up in it. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I do too. I'm a fan. <laughs> I want to know everything. No, no. I'm a fan. I want to know about other people's teams. With my team, I want it in house. <laughs> behind closed doors. Don't, no drama. Nobody no knows public yes. problems. Here, here's a quote from that article. It, he says, Seriously? You're going to yell at an offensive lineman for missing a block, but you're not going to acknowledge your own game ending blunder? Maybe Brady did that in the locker room afterward, and that's fine. But he's embarrassed others on camera, and he needs to own that publicly. It isn't no, pleasant. Doesn't. It isn't pleasant, but it comes with the territory. It comes with twenty-five million dollars salary. It comes with the endorsements. It comes with the adulation. It also comes with leadership. That's funny. If you're Brady's teammate and you watched him weasel out of those questions, how amenable will you be the next time he tries to dress you down in front of the world? Brady, meanwhile, is not expected to face the local media again until Thursday. Maybe he'll find a friendlier national outlet to explain himself before mm -hmm. then. That seems to be his favorite way of communicating. Yep, that's or, what they're pissy or, about. Or maybe he's forgotten about it already. He is kind of old, you know. That's John Romano from the Tampa Bay Times, folks. Yes, you, you are correct. You are absolutely correct. They're mad that he goes to the national media and not to them. And, you know, they act like they're part of the a team in this aspect because they're mad that, you know, Brady can dress down the offensive linemen, but he won't answer their question. Yeah. He won't you answer know? to them. Right. Like that's not their them. place. You're like, what? who you are know? you? You're lucky. Like what is he supposed to do? You. Go in the middle of the field and self-flagellate? Like what are they? Yes. Yeah, so you, you know, you know, that's what they want. To yeah. Do. Get out of here. No, they want him to do it at the podium. Right. Yeah, it's the media has gone way overboard with this. Well, you know, they they seen an opportunity to attack him. And we talked about this in the off season. It was going to happen. You know, they're going to. And it's happened with every little thing. Yeah. It's the, you know, holding the practices and not wearing a mask and, yeah. you know, all this crap. Oh, him and B.A. B. A. publicly admonishing him for something else. Right, right. right. And then they turn that into a drama. So I can't mm -hmm. imagine why Tom would not want to take that public. Yeah. They're... When just three weeks ago, it a little tiff maybe was public. And yeah, they're, they're so funny because what they do is they'll ask a question. All media does this. They'll ask the question. And then they'll report on the question that was asked by saying, a lot of people are concerned about, you know, and it's like, no, nobody's concerned about that. You are. You brought yeah. it up. You asked the question. And now you're acting like everybody in the world is concerned about it. They're not. And then all the other reporters will jump on and be like, yeah, everybody wants to know. It's like, no. You know what you need to do as a reporter? If you want to use that phrase and you want to say you're speaking for the people or whatever, have us Tell you, ask you, tell you what questions to ask. How come reporters don't do that? How come reporters don't put out there, what would you like me to ask Bruce Arians or Tom Brady or something like that? No, they want to totally control all of this. You know, and that's what they did with the, uh, with the, with the whole kerfuffle between Arians and Brady, you know, making it out like, it was some big deal. And they did that. Mm -hmm. And then they reported on them doing it like fans were concerned about it. Mm -hmm. you know, fans were concerned about that. And, and you just see this. This happens in the media all over the place. You know, they constantly are reporting on themselves and making it sound like the things they're interested in is what everybody else is interested in. No, that's not how it works, man. Uh, Scott Reynolds had a pewterreport.com article out, the two-point conversion, where he blasted everybody in the organization. Just went down the list blasted everybody i thought it was a little overboard 
I understand, Scott, you're a fan. You were upset, but you know, it took a little too far. He did have this to say. <clears throat> this is not about the game in particular, but it's about Thursday night football. He said, quote, Thursday night football is stupid. And I would still believe that if the Bucks had won 22 to 20, I'd still believe that. It's a scourge of the league. Players hate it. Coaches hate it. Only the greedy owners, the NFL commissioner and Fox, Amazon, and NFL Network like it due to the primetime revenue it generates. End quote. This drives me crazy. One, did you notice a group there he didn't mention? The fans. I love Thursday night football. The more football, the better. I would I, watch it every day. I'd have football on 24 hours a day, seven days mm-hmm. a week, 365 days a year if I could. I, I basically do. But, <laughs> you know, live football every night would make me happy. I love Thursday night footballs. It breaks up the week. They've been doing it for years. I'm used to it now. Don't try to take my Thursday night games from <laughs> You know, and then for this guy to say, this is, okay, this is Scott Reynolds. He's made a living now off of uh, reporting on the Buccaneers for 10, 20, almost 30 years now that I know of. It was the early 90s when I remember the Pewter Report magazine or whatever it was called. And, uh, you know, he's made a living. He makes a living off this. He makes a, a relatively decent living from what I can tell. This is his job. He's ma- Is he greedy? Is he greedy for going to the Thursday night game and reporting on it or or what? Or is he greedy for getting press box passes and getting to go to the games for free? Is he greedy for, you know, making a living off of reporting on what these guys do? I mean, to say that only the greedy owners, the NFL commissioner, Fox, Amazon, and NFL Network care about Thursday night games. No, I'm a fan. I care about Thursday night games. And if you're going to call them greedy, what does it make you? You know, do it for free. We're doing this for free. We do this for free. Mm-hmm. You do your for free, Scott Reynolds, unless you're going to talk about greedy. Mm-hmm. You know, you're greedy. I can say that because I'm not making any money off this. How about that? I have to call you a greedy person for, you know, doing that. It's just silly. It's silly. I do not get it. I do not understand that mentality. No, it's great. And here's another thing. This is entertainment. Sports are entertainment. There are people that get into gambling. There are some people that... Uh, you know, they, they have undue attachment to sports that makes it unhealthy. But it is, when it comes down to the end of the day, it is entertainment. It's entertainment. It's supposed to be entertaining. We shouldn't be bringing politics in it. We shouldn't be talking about greedy people and drama and all that stuff. Hey, you know, the drama's okay. If you like that type <laughs> of entertainment. But, you know, it's, let, let's, let's not forget its place in our life, you know. These reporters, it is their life. It's what they do for a living. That's how they make money. The rest of us, we spend the money. That's a, they make money off of us. If it wasn't for the fans, they wouldn't have a job. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that simple. And for them to call people out greedy and say that, oh, you know, this this player's old. And, you know, they they need to be held accountable to the media for not re- answering questions. You know, screw you, one hundred percent, screw you. I don't care. I don't care what you think. You know, I don't. I don't want to hear it. Okay, uh, Ira Kaufman from Joe Buck's fan. He had plenty to say too. Oh gosh. He said, "Quote: CBS analyst Scott Pioli called out Tampa Bay as a dumb football team, and he has a point. When you average more than eighty penalty yards per game, you get labeled a dumb football team. Smarten up." That's Ira Kaufman from the Joe Bucks fan. Now, the Joe Bucks are fans as well. Ira Kaufman, not a fan. He's a fan of Kansas City Chiefs. This is just a job to him. Right? Screw you. Don't call my team dumb. You know, we're still sitting at the top of the division. The New Orleans Saints ain't played. Even if they do win, we'll be tied with them. It's technically, they win because of the tiebreaker, but we haven't played the second game against them yet. We're a good team. And and to call us dumb, you know how hard both our offenses and defenses are? That's one thing about Chicago. Chicago played a very, very, very simple game. Very simple. We play a complex game. Our guys are smart already just to be able to do this. You know, call us dumb. What the, what's that, what's that, what's that saying about fans? With the fans, if you're going to call the team dumb, what what are you saying about the fans? Yeah, y'all are following a dumb team. Y'all are a bunch of dummies. <laughs> that's how I be. That's how I'm here. So you know, media, get off your high horses. 
seriously. It's you know, holier than that shit. Owners not being accountable to the media and calling teams dumb for penalties. All right, let's move on to that. Let's move on to the game itself. Now, again, we brought this up at the beginning of thing. It was an upsetting loss. It was very upsetting. I wanted to see us win. I wanted to do it on the national stage, but we still got plenty of time for that because we got plenty of national games coming up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we did not play our A game. They did bring their A game. And they barely beat us. Barely beat us. And I'm going to change that statement. They didn't beat us. You know, we talk about this all the time. Did you lose the game? Did you win the game? Did you get beat? Or did the refs cost you the game? And I'm going to say this. This is what I'm mad about. You know, this is what pisses me off about the media, that they're not bad about. This happened during the New Orleans game. The New Orleans game, we lost that game 100% because of the refs. What was it, 26 uncalled penalties I counted mm-hmm. in that game? I think that just, was just holding. <laughs> I think it was 19 holding calls. Okay. And then uh, hands to the face and hit, late hit on quarterbacks, all that good stuff, pass interference. They were, just didn't call anything on them. They didn't call any holding at all in that game. It was holding all over the place. Anyhow, same thing with this game. The refs cost us this game. Now, we didn't play the best football we've ever played. No. But the refs cost us this game. Now, people are going to say, oh, you know, that's just something. No, I do this every game. I set, I write down every time refs make the mistakes, and I grade the refs after every game. And I say, you know, this is after I do the All-22. And I will give the refs a grade. Now, I never give them a grade over the C just because screw the refs. But, you know, it's either C, D, E, or F. And F crossed the board in the New Orleans game. F, 100%. This game, at least an E. But here's why I'm saying that. Every single drive that they had where they scored points, the refs were heavily involved in that. Generally, they were calling penalties on us that were bull. Mm-hmm. Okay? The Let's start off that. To start off, their first drive, when they got their first touchdown, it was third and 12 at the Chicago 39. Third and 12. You know, they don't make this. It's a punt. Third and 12. Shaquille Barrett gets called for neutral zone infraction. When everybody that was watching this could see that the right guard, 74, he moved way early. I mean, it was he just moved. He just moved. They didn't call it on him. They called it on Barrett. Uh, even John Ledyard from uh, his Pewter Report's newest beat writer, yeah, give him props. He said, quote, there was plenty of blame to go around in this one, but a mistake by the officials was the game-changing moment that swung the tide against the Bucks' defense that has lost some of the early season mojo over the past two weeks, end quote. He was talking about that play and that right guard moving and them calling it on Barrett. Now, what that, ha- what that did is that moved them up, made it shorter. They ended up getting the third down conversion and then moving down the field to score a touchdown. But if they wouldn't have done that, if they would have called it on who they were supposed to call, 74, who moved, I mean, it was just plain as day, that would have made it third and 17 for those guys. And they would never would have got that. No. And they would have punted it. They never would have got that touchdown. Boom, 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 bang, bang, bang. I mean, it's not like they were just zipping down the field, scoring touchdowns on mm-hmm. us left and right. No. Every single score they got was helped along by the refs. Okay. Then there was the Vaughn fumble. That was their. That was the touchdown they got. Then almost immediately after that, we get the ball. We're backed up on our end zone. Brady throws a uh, uh, middle over the middle pass to Keyshawn Vaughn, and uh, he gets hit, and the ball comes out. Even the announcers said that was not a fumble. They showed it slow motion. They kept replaying. And then they had, what was it? What's his Mike name? Pereira. Mike Pereira. Come on. He is the referee media guy. Used to be the head of the refs, right? Yeah. Uh, head, he, of an, head of NFL officiating. Yes. Okay. So now he's he's just in the booth now. And uh, he he was sitting there going, yeah, no, that's not a catch. There's no way. They're not. They're not. Going, there's not enough evidence. Yeah, he there never had that. control. Never they, had control. They ruled it in what incomplete pass on the field. Yes, incomplete pass. And then I think they even threw a flag. And, and we thought it was going to be a defenseless receiver. 
because I mean there was some right. pad cracking, and mm-hmm. then on the slow mo, you're like, yeah, I don't know, it, it doesn't really look like a defenseless receiver. Yeah, no, it was good. Yeah, he got him in the shoulder. Yeah, or in the with his shoulder, and yeah, didn't hit him in the head. All that good stuff. I, you know, I think isn't that the rule? You have to hit him in the head, neck area. For, yeah, it's got to you know, be the head and neck area. So yeah. he was so down here. So then they review it, and it shocked everybody in the booth. It shocked me when they were like, you know, it's a fumble. They're getting the ball right there. Everybody's like, what? Yeah. What? And then it was just you know easy walk in touchdown from there. So there, right there, it's two, it's two touchdowns that were given to them basically by the refs. You know, at least put the refs put them in position to get the score then there was the call on ryan jensen for unsportsmanship like oh. conduct now joe bucks fan they wrote a whole article on this it's called terrible discipline that was the title of the article what yes yes and he, <laughs> i'm going to quote a little bit of this he says if joe had video of the worst of the worst it was buck center ryan jensen going full-blown kamala the ugandan beast of wrestling fame and headbutting a Bears defender. That was not even a headbutt. There is a razor thin line between being aggressive and being downright dumb. And this headbutt stunt was flat out stupid. A high school kid would get benched for that. End quote. Okay, so Again, this is go. the narrative that the Joe Bucks fan uh, organization is going with. The stupid, the dumb, the dumb yeah. narrative. We dumb. Yeah, watching that game, and I saw the, you know, they finally showed Ryan Jensen headbutting the guy after they said, you know, and he didn't headbutt nobody. That was not a headbutt. No, he walked over, leaned his head forward a bit. The guy, the I mean, guy. he got up in the guy's face. I mean, yeah. they were face mask to face mask. Right. But that was not a headbutt by, by any, any stretch means. of the imagination. No stretch of the imagination. I've seen that happen 15,000 times in my in watching football. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe Jensen said something to the guy, you know, talked about his mom or something. I don't know. The ref was right there. I mean, the ref was standing, you know, with its spitting distance of him. And he threw the flag. And he, I'm like, what? That is a penalty? That's a 15-yard penalty? I can understand if he went over there and, you know, bam, just full body. But he didn't. He walked over. And as he was walking over to him, he put his head forward and their heads butted. But it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a violent collision. It was. It was ridiculous. It was. Uh, it, you know. And then for Joe Buck's fan to come out and say it's the worst of the worst, and that's high school, and it's stupid, and all this. No, no, you're wrong. You are one hundred percent wrong. That happens all the time. You'd have to throw flags fifteen times a game mm-hmm. because that had. Why they threw that flag, I do not know. But here's another thing. Not a single announcer, media personality, or anybody up to this day has condemned Khalil Mack hip-tossing Tristan Wirfs. Now, he did that after he sacked Brady, after the whistle was blown, and for no reason. Now, Wirfs was trying to push Mack off of Brady, and you could see Worf was started stumbling, so he's kind of pushing Mac as he's stumbling. And Mac reaches up under his arm, sticks his hips out, and flips Worf's onto the ground on his back. Two referees that I watched were sitting there, sitting there watching that. Now, if that's not the very definition of unnecessary friggin' roughness, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. There was no reason for Worf's to do that. I mean, for mac to do that he could have very easily just stepped out of the way worse was off balance he could have just stepped out of the way of the guy but no he decided to be a jerk and nobody has called him out for it as a matter of fact there's highlight clips of it all over the place everybody's like oh look at how tough welcome to the nfl rookie yeah welcome to the nfl rookie it's ridiculous and here it is we're going to call jensen for bumping a guy in the helmet a 15 yard penalty yeah and then Mac can actually hip toss a dude <laughs> after the whistle is blown. And, you know, something's got to be done about this ref stuff. Something's got to be done. All right. Then we move on. Uh, if Barrett was called for rough in the passer. This was a third and 19 in the fourth quarter with three minutes and 58 seconds left. And we were up by two. Okay. Barrett sacked uh, Foles. At the five-yard line. They would have been at the five-yard line. 
their five yard line. Okay. Barrett got caught, and even again, the announcers were like, "What? That's ridiculous. That's not a you know, especially it's incidental, if anything." Especially considering that they knocked Tom Brady on his ass. I can't tell you how many times. Not that many, actually. About five. Yeah. Well, still, I mean, any one of those could have been called for roughing the passer. There was uh, one really egregious one that they yeah. did not call. Yeah, there was there was a couple where again, if you're going to call this, then you should have called them. exactly. That's my point. Yes, but I mean, we go from having the sack at the five yard line on a third and nineteen, which would have been a punt. They would have had to have punted, and that would have been game. Yeah, that would have pretty much been game because then we would have got the ball at the at the fifty probably. That's if we didn't block the punt and get a safety, whatever. Right. It's all kind of stuff that could have happened. But instead, what happened was they got the ball on the 32 because of the roughing the passer. So instead of having to punt the ball from the five-yard line, they get to punt it from their 32, which put us on our eight-yard line. And then we had to try and get away from our end zone because we're backed up right on our end zone. That's when we went three and out because we tried to – a rush. We tried uh, Jones. He got a tackle for a loss. Then we tried two passes, incomplete, and we kicked it. Gave them short field. Blah blah blah. It changed the game completely, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So that's four. That's four penalties right there that just completely changed this game. And that's not to mention the second and eleven. At the Tampa Bay 42 in the fourth quarter with a minute and 42 seconds left. Okay. They throw the ball. Shaq Barrett is covering Montgomery. And uh, 24, Carlton Davis gets in Shaq Barrett's way a little bit. They both get kind of caught up. Montgomery gets out just a little bit. It was a perfect pass by Falls. But it was a 17-yard pass. Gave him a first down. On that play, on that play, the right tackle, number 72, moved before the ball snapped. I saw it watching the game, and I was like, what? The, are they not calling this at all? It was plain as day. He moves before the ball snapped. That should have been a blown whistle. Should have backed him up five yards. It should have been second and 16. Now, uh, uh, there is a panel, apparently, that watches the referees they review each game after the game they watch the referees and they grade them and mistakes are noted and all this good stuff i want to know what those are i think as fans we need to we deserve to see those grades i don't know what they do with them i don't know how we can find them Mm -hmm. or even if they're out there but this is getting ridiculous we've lost two games because of the refs now you can, you can argue with me all day long if you want to about, you know, the, you, you have to overcome the refs and everything, but you can't overcome this mess. You cannot overcome when you're sacking a guy on his five-yard line and uh, you're like, no, nah, we're going to give it to him on a 30 now because you know, we're just going to totally flip everything because, you know, we think you roughed the quarterback up, you know, or we're just going to totally ignore, you know, these false starts. You know, and let them move down the field. Mm-hmm. You'll totally ignore a false start. Let your guy get called for it instead. And, you know, <laughs> let him get a touchdown. It's just ridiculous. And we can't do this. Every touchdown that the Saints got against us, there was a massive amount of holding. <sighs> you can't win that way. And we're not. Every, both games we've lost have, have been due to the refs. Now, again, I will say this. We didn't bring our A game. And they did. But we didn't get our butts beat. We're, it wasn't like they were the better team. There's no nobody can say that. Uh, we were not blown out. Now the Bears. We have an interesting history with the Bears. Uh, if you're if you're a regular listener to this podcast, you know that me and Molly are flummoxed by the 2011 season. It was the Bears. We went to London to play the Bears. This is in 2011. In 2010, we had gone 10 and 6 with Raheem Morris, our young great coach. Went 10 and 6. Surprised everybody. Didn't make the playoffs because of a tiebreaker against, uh, I think it was Arizona. And 
so the next year we come out, we come out strong. We're four and two. We go to London to play Chicago. We got stomped. It was embarrassing. Our team just imploded. The score was 21 to five until the fourth quarter. And uh, we ended up scoring in garbage time and everything. But the London game, we were four and two going into that game. We ended up going four and twelve on the season. We didn't lose. We didn't win a single game after that. Lost ten in a row. That was the start of the Buccaneers' demise. Ever since then, we've struggled as a team. And I think we've only had one winning season since then. It was a nine and seven. <laughs> I think ten and six. I can't remember. So the Buccaneer, the the Bears have that on us. Then there was the Bears during Lovey Smith. Uh, they whooped up on us. They scored three touchdowns in the third quarter. The score ended up being 21-13. You notice that score was 21-13. to They scored three touchdowns on us in the third quarter. That's all they scored. Oh my but God. They scored three touchdowns on us in the third quarter <laughs> and beat us. Then there was the horrible, horrible, infamous game, September 30th, 2018, when Dirk Cutter was our coach and Mike Smith was our Supposed, alleged defensive coordinator. The Bears beat us 48 to 10. Ugh. Mitch Trubisky threw six touchdowns against us in that game. That was the game where Justin Evans played the worst football I've ever seen a player play. He looked confused, had no idea what he was doing out there, did some of the strangest things. I don't know if he was uh, drunk or <laughs> just had. They had totally no attention to the game plan or the playbook, but the Bears have always been a stickler, a thorn in our side. We used to be in the same division with them, uh, so our record against them was not that great to begin with. Back when we were the Yucks and they were the, the best team in the league, they beat up on us quite a bit. But uh, we've got the Bears have. Uh, something with us and they have a tendency to turn our fan base against our coaches and let's not let this happen okay let's not do that this year guys it was a loss but we were not blown out we were not embarrassed we were not beat up i mean they brought their a game we didn't and they had the refs on their side so that's how i see it and uh, we'll see how we do against the Packers, who are coming up. Everybody's expecting the Packers to win, although I saw we were up by three and a half points in Vegas. Really? Yeah. I was like, well. So, yeah, the Bears, you know, brought their A game. Their kicker was did not show up. Uh, Santos was uh, five and seven on the season coming in on this. He had missed two already. And he comes in and nails a 38-yarder and a 47-yarder. And I think Foles now has the hot hand as far as quarterbacks on their team go. I mean, Trubisky was benched in his favor. I know, after winning three games. I know, how's that happen? Trubisky gets benched, they put Foles in, they lose the game, and then they keep Foles still. I know. That is, that's the weirdest to me, man. But it seems like Foles is like another Fitzpatrick. Yeah, he's very streaky. I mean, the dudes won a Super Bowl with Philly. Mm -hmm. And then couldn't keep his job. Yeah, I know. How's that happen? I know. Uh, some positives from the game. Okay. And some positives up to this point. Our kicker did great. Yeah. I mean, he nailed four field goals and extra we, point. We and got the gimmies. Yeah. But those weren't gimmies. I mean, he kicked a 39er, a 35, a 46, and a 25, and then extra point. So, you know, hey, we talk. If, yeah, if our kicker would have missed, we'd all be talking about get rid of the kicker. Yeah. You know, if we would have got in field goal range and he missed it, then it would have been just get rid of the kicker. But now it's get rid of everybody. Get mm -hmm. rid of Arians, get rid of Byron, get rid of... Are fans actually saying that? I'm not seeing that with I've, the fans. I've, I've seen, seen quite a few fans, yes, who are BA is a crap coach. And there's all these articles being written about uh, we didn't call the right plays during the right times and all this. You know, like, they didn't either. <laughs> It's not like the Bears were out there lighting us up. Yeah, I mean, statistically, we were about the same. I mean, Tom Brady went 25 for 41. He had 253 yards. 
Nick Foles went 30 for 42, and he had 243 yards. He had a touchdown and interception. Tom Brady did not throw an interception. And, you know, he Tom Brady got sacked three times for 20 yards, but Nick Foles also got sacked for three times and for 35 yards. So, I mean, it wasn't that big. I mean, we actually had yeah. more yardage. He actually got sacked four times, but they called one back. But then again, so did Brady. Right. That's and right. then, you know, Rojo with rushing just absolutely killed it, 106 yards. That was the next thing I was going to bring up. They yeah, Rojo, had, that's two 100 games in a row. Yeah. When, when was the last time we had that? I love that. Like I'm Blunt? so happy that he is yeah. falling into a rhythm, it feels like. I don't know what they did with him, but it's where I, it feels like he's running more up the middle and yeah, having a yeah, lot definitely. of success that way. Well, we, we were talking about doing this beforehand, but bringing out all the stuff we said in the podcast about the Bears game. The preview. The preview. Yeah. And it was almost spot on. You know, I was like, we run them up the middle. You know, they're yeah. weak up the middle. And sure enough, man, he was killing it up the middle. And then we were like concerned about our outside edges. You know, they. Because that's you know, how be uh, Los Angeles got that's us. That's exactly how Chargers. That's how everybody's going to play. Us. That is our only weakness, which, you know, when it comes down to it, it's not that big of a weakness. You know, yeah. we're, you know, we're tackling the guys. They're getting, you know, these little passes. And every now and then they'll, you know, be able to pop off a, uh, you know, a, a 12 or 15 yard run after the catch. But, uh, you know, it's just the, you know, playing that soft coverage on the outside cornerbacks. And it was funny watching, rewatching the game. I was, I would pause it before the snap, and I'd go, "Okay, this uh, Jamal Dean's playing off, so Foles is going to throw it over there." And sure enough, every time it was like eighty percent of the time, I was right. I was like, "Well, this was easy." Yeah. I mean, they, they had a very simple game plan, and we kind of immediately caught on to what their game plan it was going to be. You know, and like I said, it's not like they were marching up and down the field on us. We just couldn't stop them. We stopped them plenty. You know, we they were getting a lot of help from the refs, mm-hmm. and we did have a cute few brain farts, but it wasn't, you know. Again, it, they didn't beat us. You know, mm-hmm. we beat ourselves, or the refs beat us. Yeah, that's simple. We held them to thirty-five yards rushing. That's incredible. Don't man. Know. Uh, with Vita getting hurt, Vita Vea. If, you, if in case you're not aware, Vita mm-hmm. Vea is out for the season with a fractured ankle. Looking at it on the replay, you know his leg, his his ankle, his foot was turned completely. Right. So yeah. B.A. Yeah. says it's a broken leg. So, somewhere in there. I don't know. Yeah. So but it, his foot was... Ugh. That's that's probably going to put a, a, a hurting on our running game a little bit, our run defense a little bit. Nacho, Nacho's competent, but he's not beaten. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be tough. We apparently uh, inquired with Seattle. And I don't know if we talked to Seattle or this defensive tackle, Damon Harrison. Uh, he's on their practice squad, so we inquired about him to possibly bring him in, but mm. either he was not interested or the Seahawks were not. I, I think that you just sign the player off the practice squad. I don't think you have to go through the team, so it sounds so to me yeah. like Mr. Harrison, Mr. Harrison was not trying to come down to Tampa. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, uh, we need some we, we need some depth there, so we're going to get somebody. Uh, we we don't have anybody on the practice squad. Nobody there to bring up. Yeah. Okay. Well. Did uh, we draft somebody? We drafted a defensive tackle. Oh, we uh, we've Davis, got uh, Vita's buddy. Yeah, he's on the practice squad, so we could bring up any one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, those they're guys. all rookies. Though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eighteen. Tyler Johnson. He really showed. Yeah, him. he was. He's like really him. fun to watch. Yeah, he good run super, after the catcher. Yeah. Uh, he yeah, reminds hard me to bring down. He's really slippery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he reminds me of Chris Godwin. He was actually our leading receiver with sixty-one yards. He had a thirty-five yard long. Was targeted six times, caught four of those, and then listen to this. So he had four receptions, led the team in yardage. Uh, Gronk was next with 52 yards. Brait was next with 44 yards. So our two <laughs> of our top three receivers were tight ends. So there you go. And uh, Mike Evans was fourth. He had five targets. I mean, no, he had nine targets, only caught five of them. Yeah. So I'm like, eh. yeah. But he had 41 yards and a touchdown. So Scotty Miller had zero, not a single target. That was very strange. I can't wait to dive into this all 22. Really excited about it. Uh, 
Yeah, but I really like that Tyler Johnson. He he it reminded he looked like a, just a smaller Chris Godwin. Yeah, he had the small. same style, everything, and he yeah. just bounced right off of people <laughs> and had no problem with contact. I felt like. I feel like Chris Godwin is a little more physical, like he wants to kind of bowl people yeah. over, and yeah. Tyler Johnson is a little more finesse. Finesse, yes. Yes. But I like it. He was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see more of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about that. It's uh, it's nice to see these guys pop up. You know, yeah. it's, it's kind of like Winfield. You know, it's just like didn't know a thing about him, and mm-hmm. then boom, uh, he comes up, and you're just like, wow, that's fun. That's exciting to watch. Although... He really didn't do much last night. Yeah. Notice our linebackers didn't do much. Yeah, I was looking at that on the stat sheet. Yeah. So our leading tackler was Carlton Davis with seven. Um. Yeah, because they were throwing almost all to the outside. Yeah, the Levante had five tackles, three solo. And then he had no passes defended he had no quarterback hits uh no tfls which is unusual uh devin white was way down at the bottom he had three tackles one solo and a half of a tfl yeah yeah De- uh devin white was almost completely non-existent in this game but there's a reason for that there is a reason for that now our linebackers are fast they go from edge to edge uh, they're pretty quick but look at this. This is Nick Foles' pass uh, chart from the game. Is this right? Is this a... Yeah. There's 22. If you look, almost everything is on the left or on the right and he had, I think I counted 16 passes within five yards of the line of scrimmage. There's very few over 10 yards. Very few. That is crazy. And they're almost all on the left or right. And There's a the, huge cluster on the right. Yeah. And in the middle is completely devoid. I mean, there's hardly anything. That's where our Devin White and Levante David are at. Yeah. So they avoided those guys. Here's Tom Brady's. Here's all the passes he threw and where they at. As you can see, most of them are uh, pretty much from the middle to the left. Yeah, he really favors that side of the field. Yeah, he favors the left side of the field. But they're all over the place. Very few behind the line of scrimmage and, you know, within five yards. Looks like maybe 10. It's a really stark difference between Nick Foles because – what you said inside 10 yards and Tom Brady, I mean, his is mostly look, I mean, it's clustered almost completely within 10 mm-hmm. yards. Yeah. And, uh, it's all on the left and the right. There's hardly anything in the middle. And that's what they did. It was, you know, it was smart move on their part. It worked for them, but it only worked for them because we didn't bring our a game and the refs helped. If, if we would have brought our a game, we would have just stomped these guys. We would have stomped them. You know, that this mess here wouldn't have worked. I really feel like the offensive line, not that they play, I just felt like they got outmatched on the line and it really threw off the offense. I don't know. I, you know, watching the game, you kind of felt like that they were getting manhandled. Tom Brady was yelling at them on the sideline. Well, that that was mainly because <laughs> that one the one drive, and this was really the drive that uh, that turned the game around to where you felt like it was just a real mess. And that was in the we got the ball on the fifty. We had a return. And the guy ran it back to the fifty. Oh yeah, was that Mickens? Yes, Mickens. This was a uh, seven sixteen in the third quarter is when the drive started. I think it was like nine or ten play drive. We went negative three yards and we ended up with, it was like mm-hmm. third and 30 or something like that. It was ridiculous. Second and 34. That's when Jensen got the the uh, head button thing. And I think that's what, you know, that that was the play that, or that, that was the drive where Brady just screamed at him on the sideline. And it was just a bad, bad series. You know, you get you get the ball on the fifty yard line. You expect to get a field goal minimum. Yeah, yeah. You know, 
but somehow we had lost negative three yards in like 10 plays and ended up with a third and 30. Whatever. Yeah, we were actually first yeah, and thirty bad. at one point yeah. from the forty-five. I'm like, how does that happen? I know I, it yeah, was just, just a series of mistakes mm-hmm. and flags. Yeah, it was like flags every play, and it's just ridiculous. But I, you know, I did, I didn't see the offensive line get beat up the way everybody is talking about them. Uh, yes, Khalil Mack beat Worfs a couple of times. He got us. He got two sacks on Worfs, but only one counted because the other one was called back. I think. And or, I think he got one on Donovan too. He got one on Donovan too. Yes, but the, the, one of those sacks was a busted play, and it was either Brady was confused as to what was supposed to happen, or the the linemen were confused. But I, I'm going to go with Brady because Brady snaps the ball and he he does like a five seven step drop. And the two tackles let their guys go. Um, Remember, I, mm-hmm. I told you about that when it happened. I was like, that did not look right. But yeah, you know, they just kind of pushed them as they were going by. And both of them went to run like they were going out for screen passes. Oh. And we've got a few plays that do that where both tackles or you know, both sides of the line go out on both sides of the field for different screen passes. And the quarterback gets to choose which one to go to. But he has to do it quick. But it looked like Brady was not expecting that. So anyhow, what ended up happening is both uh, the rushers just they had a straight shot basically to Brady, and he fell down. And they just that, and it made it made our line look bad. But yeah. I don't think it was their fault. Yeah. And again, we're going to have to look back at all these on all twenty-two and see if we you know was running backs missing blocks was mm-hmm. uh, you know was it bad trade offs between the offensive linemen. You know, whatever. There's all kinds of stuff you can't. It's just hard to tell on the broadcast version whose fault it really was. Yeah. You know, so we'll see. I don't think they played as bad. They didn't play great. That's for dang sure. And they didn't play as good as I wanted them to. It just felt like in the trenches really made a difference. Really turned it in Chicago's favor. That's the sense I got from watching the game. That Khalil Mack something, ain't he? He is. He I'm. A, his stat sheet is just crazy. Uh, three tackles, two solo, two sacks, two TFLs, a pass defense, three quarterback hits. How in the world could you still be a Raiders fan after John Gruden basically giving him away? I. He just. Uh, uh, <laughs> that was so weird. Yeah, it really was. And then he did the same thing with Amari Cooper. You know, just like, eh. We don't want them anymore. Yeah, they they got too big of names. Gruden does not like anybody's name being bigger than his in a room. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So, uh, you know, there were some positives from the game. Uh, Tyler Johnson, Ronald Jones, suck up, uh, but not enough. What do you think about Tom Brady not staying out on the field to congratulate Nick Foles? Uh, I'm not really a fan of that. Me neither. I I didn't like that. Uh, I thought, and it kind of seemed like Nick Foles was looking around the field oh, yeah, for him. Was. Yeah, he had his guy out there. You know, the guy they normally yeah. have guys that help find the other players. Yeah, and they're both sitting there looking around. I think at a minimum, you go out and congratulate Nick Foles, and then you go in the locker room. Yeah, Tom Brady was probably just all emotional. I mean, you know, he was probably embarrassed. He was angry. He was despondent. But still, it's no excuse. You know, you go out there and you. You know, it's not Foles' fault. No. Matter of fact, I never like it. I never understood this when they say things like, you know, it's the battle of Nick Foles against Tom Brady. Nick Foles is the only you know, quarterback that's beaten Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. It's like, no, he doesn't play the other quarterback. Well, I mean, it has you kind of do. No, bearing. no, I disagree. Because the as a quarterback, you have to keep up with the other guy in scoring. Like, if he, if. Nick Foles can drive his offense down the field and score. Then as the opposing quarterback, it's your job to match him tit for tat. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. But you're not playing against them in the sense that they're not on the field at the same time. It's like if we have a crappy defense, then the other quarterback's going to have a good time. He's going to have an easy time. Yeah, but you're just you're competing to see who can score the most points. Yeah, I guess. And that largely falls on the quarterbacks. 
I've just never understood how they I they always make saying. a big deal about pitting the quarterbacks yeah. against each other. And I'm like, no, they don't even play each other. They're not even, never even on the field at the same time. Right. But, but if you have a quarterback like Tom Brady, you know, I mean, like Blake Bortles is not going to be any match for a quarterback like that. You know, that caliber. I don't think Nick Foles is that caliber either, but no, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, it, it was not, I did not think it was cool. It did not make Brady look good. Him yelling at the offensive line on the sideline did not make Brady look good. I mean, it doesn't bother me, really. You know, I'm still like, I don't care. I know, they're grown ass put babies men, on they spikes. Can, I'm cool. I know, he's the goat. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> he's on my like, team. I don't give a shit. I always Whatever he back. needs to do. Yeah. Um, it's not like he hasn't earned that clout and that privilege. Yeah. I think I don't think it's a uh license to be like disrespectful or whatever, but I don't I think that it's his job as a quarterback to chew them out if they're messing up. Yeah. And we don't know what happened at the end of the game. No. You know, I mean, for all we know, Brady might have been feeling sick, you know, and run in and you know, maybe it's diarrhea or something. I don't know. I mean, if something something happened at the end of the game that was unbrady like, you know, for him to not go out and congratulate Foles, it to me it didn't seem like it was a spiteful thing. He, he had it, it wasn't Foles. I he think that didn't. he just hates losing so much. I think that he and he's not used. I mean, it's been so long since he's been in an offense where that he didn't know inside and out. Yeah. I mean, he's still learning this offense, and I think that he's kind of a perfectionist. And so he hates losing, and he hates doing sloppy crap like what happened in the game. Yeah. And so I don't think it was the best look, and I don't think that it was the best way to handle it, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got texts immediately after that, and they were like, Tom Brady's an asshole. <laughs> you know, like shut your mouth. That's my quarterback. I know. <laughs> it was kind of a jerk move, but I again, I don't think it was anything personal. But that's just speculation. Well, none of us knows. We don't right. know. The media, I haven't heard you need anyone, to get on that. <laughs> I haven't heard anyone talking about it though. I know. It's very strange. Isn't that weird? It, there's a lot of stuff from this game I haven't heard anybody talk about. It's where you're just like, that's kind of a big deal, you know? Ah, like the Khalil Mack hip tossing. Trust and worse. How how the media in, in this day and age where we talk about player safety, mm -hmm. you're gonna do that after the whistle, and everybody's just gonna applaud it. Yeah, like yeah. needlessly, you didn't yeah. need to do it. It's the very definition of unnecessary roughness. It was unnecessary, and it was rough. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All righty. Uh, no game tomorrow. I think we're going to be Sunday. watching the Green Bay Packers since we Green Bay Packers match up against tomorrow. them next week. Oh, they're they, not. They, they have, have a bye. bye. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I know. Uh, we'll probably be watching the Saints and the yeah. Falcons and the Panthers. Yeah. I know. You Is know, it, it'll make me feel better, though, if the Falcons can blow like another 30 point <laughs> win. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you are vicious, man. Well, I oh, mean. Well, they're playing Carolina. Misery so. loves company. Okay, if it can just be a 0-0 zero, zero game, I will be completely happy. I kind of want the Panthers to lose more. So. Yeah. 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 I don't really care. Uh, the New Orleans Saints are playing the Chargers Monday night at 8.15 p.m. So we will be watching Maybe the they can get beat on national television. That would be nice. The Chargers ain't nobody sneeze at. That's what I'm we saying. We saw that. Uh, Carolina Atlanta is at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Sunday. So we'll be watching that game at 1 o'clock. The Baltimore game. I like watching Baltimore. Baltimore is just they're they're fun. fun. They've they're, always they're just been fun. Mean. I they're love tough. John Harbaugh. If we yeah. could have gotten him. Yeah, you wanted him. I wanted him so ugh. bad. Yeah. It's like, ugh. I mean, they're just a tough mm -hmm. football. They tackle, they block. They tackle, they block. Yeah. That's the, they're probably the best in the league ever. Uh, Seattle's playing Minnesota. That's going to be yeah. interesting. Now, Minnesota's got that, what's his name, Jefferson? Jeff Jefferson or some crap like that? A wide receiver? I really no like No idea. Are they like one and three? In the, yeah. And I think Seattle's undefeated. Four and a, uh, the Vegas is playing Kansas City. That'll be a good game, too. 1 okay, PM. division game. Yeah, division game. And we play 
We still have to play the Raiders. We yep. haven't played them yet. So we'll do some research on that one. And Kansas City's fun to watch too. So. Yeah. All right. That's going to wrap it up for us. We, uh, <laughs> I just started a game on my computer and almost started playing. I was quick on the draw to stop that. All right, guys. It was a tough, thing, tough, tough game. Everybody's got their emotions or through the roof on this one. Oh, I had somebody tweet on us that at least the silver lining is that we have 10 days as a team to prepare for the next game. Yeah, heal up a little bit. Uh, right. Not getting Vita Vea back, that's going to hurt us. It's going to suck for me watching all 22, too, because I like watching him. Uh, but we will probably have Chris Godwin back. Mike Evans will be fully healed up. Leonard Fournette back. Uh, we we are not injured like most teams are at this point in the season, so we, we should be thankful for that. Our kicker's doing good. Our running game's doing good. And here's what I'm going to say. I meant to say this to you about the running game. I think it's more the blocking. The blocking has gotten better, the run blocking. And I feel like he's following his blockers better. Yeah, yeah. He's getting more disciplined. Yeah. And, you know, Fournette might be teaching him a little bit on that stuff. You know well, what? he might be worried about losing his job. There we go. That's what we, <laughs> Incentives matter, buddy. To Fournette. <laughs> I mean, he's gotten lucky with Fournette and Shady off his back the last couple of weeks because yeah, neither one have been... Uh, mm -hmm playing but yeah he's he's stepped up you know Fournette had that big game and you know everybody was questioning we us included with ronald jones is gonna lose a starting job and yeah. ever since then man he is I know. played lights out mm -hmm. and he's had the opportunity too because they've been hurt yeah so he's been on the field most yeah of the time. i've been really impressed with him these last couple of weeks yeah 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 he's he been a big it. part of our offense stepping up when we really needed him when our mm -hmm. receiving core has been so banged up so. Yeah, if we wouldn't have got backed up on that second to the last drive of ours where we were on our, I think, eight-yard yeah, eight line, that was that whole they should have been at their five-yard line punting from their five, you know, which is really dangerous territory to be punting mm -hmm. from. But instead they gave the penalty against Shaq for that stupid uh, – I get so aggravated with that. And it, it moved them way up, and they were able to punt it, put us on our eight yards, basically flip the fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we – we could have run the clock out, but we were so close to our end zone that we had to get out of our end zone. We didn't do it. And it hurt us. But we had – we couldn't just run the ball. You know, and I – people give uh, Leftwich and Arians a hard time about, you know, that run and then two passes incomplete. And, you know, all we needed was two first downs. That would have been it. Done. And we probably could have got it if we ran. But you're taking a big chance there. If you run and you don't get it, we end up with exactly what we ended up getting. So, uh, I think uh, Rojo could have closed that game out if we were not back on our eight yard line. You know, if we were if we were at the 15, something like that, then, yeah, we would have just ran the ball down their throats. But we couldn't do that from the eight yard line. Not – you know, not when you think, okay, we can get at least one first down on a pass. And unfortunately, we didn't get any first down. So that's where that really hurt us. But, yeah, Rojo playing great. I'm very impressed with him. Uh, like the new Johnson kid, 18. And suck up. So there we go. There we go. All right, guys. Uh, no game. Like, like we said, no game tomorrow. So keep wallowing in our <laughs> – pity or whatever we're doing uh that's gotta get too upset we're still the best football team on the planet i think we just uh you know we had a few brain farts we're okay we're okay though it's the chicago bears We've got the green bay packers coming in we're going to play well against them i'm still up in the air as to whether we're going to beat them or not got to watch some game film on the packers i've watched a few games on them they look like they're uh like they're pretty tough but i think we can beat them all right that's going to wrap it up for us. Till next time. Go Bucks.